sort of stuff and um, um, you know helping getting your project off the ground. Um, so about me, um, you know, I'm, I'm an amateur uh, tech enthusiast. Um, you know, I'm really into machine learning. That's kind of my main uh, my main interest. Um, I have absolutely no no training in computer science, engineering, uh, software development. Uh, but on the plus side, uh, this presentation is free. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's a Raspberry Pi? Um, a Raspberry Pi is a cheap, very small, open source computer. Um, I don't know the, the kind of full history of the Raspberry Pi, other than um, it's, I believe, done by a, a, a nonprofit organization out of, uh, out of the UK. Um, and their mission was to make a computer for $35. And um, so it's, it's very bare bones. Um, and it doesn't have anything in it that um, you know isn't really kind of probably necessary to the very basic function f functioning of a computer, um, and uh, it's completely open source, meaning that uh, you you know the the, the um, there's, nothing's hidden from you. You can get the schematics for this thing. You can get the data sheets for all the components. Uh, there's ton of tons of information online about how to use it, and um, as a consequence, it makes learning and implementing stuff on the Raspberry Pi uh, really easy to do. And it's been a great service for um, the community, both for um, you know, people like me building their own projects, uh, you know, for people learning about uh, programming, learning about um, you know, uh, operating systems uh, or hardware. Uh, you know, it's, just, it's, it's been a real um, boon to the community. So yeah, most, most of us think of computers as being you know, these big things that sit on your desktop. Um, you know, or, or a laptop, um, but uh, um, you know, the beauty with the Pi is it is so simple and it's so cheap. Um, and so, even if you completely destroy it, which is unlikely, uh, you're only out 35 bucks. And so, you should feel uh, you know very confident about taking risks, you know, with the technology and hooking things up. And as long as you observe some very basic, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, rules, you should be absolutely fine. And uh, you're really not likely to break your pie, but if you do, it's only 35 bucks. Um, and so uh, um, let me show you, first of all, kind of what's on the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, so kind of starting from uh, the upper right-hand corner, uh, and this is the Pi Model 3. So this is the newest, newest version of the, the Raspberry Pi. You can get them on Amazon. Um, and... Uh, um, you know that they're quite a bit better actually than the, the version two, which is what I started using uh, maybe about a year or two ago. And uh, so the version three comes with uh, yeah, it's got four USB ports, uh, so you can plug in anything that has a USB uh, connector to it. It has one um, Ethernet port, so you can connect it directly to your network if you want. Um, it has a yeah composite video and, and audio output jack, which I've never actually used, uh, but you can. Uh, a camera port for plugging in directly to uh, a digital camera uh, in a manner that doesn't require you to go over the USB, uh, which is actually really handy for uh, um, you know uh, a video or uh, photography applications. Uh, the HDMI port allows you to plug your Pi into um, you know any old monitor, um, and then the power is just a standard micro USB. Same thing you use on your cell phone, most likely, unless you have an iPhone. Um, and then uh, yeah, the, the, the display port, uh, which I've never used. Uh, so in, the, in the brain of a Pi, it's so actually if you would hand me mine. Thanks. So the actual, the brain of the Pi and the uh, non-volatile memory storage is, uh, is this. It's, it's a little micro SD card. Uh, the same thing that you, well, before everyone started using you know, mobile phones as, a, as their cameras. It's the same thing that you'd use in a, in a camera to store your pictures on. And um, you know, this is the equivalent of the hard drive. This really is the hard drive of the Raspberry Pi. Um, you can get them again. This one's 32 gigabytes, and you can get it for like, I don't know, maybe $8 or something. Um, so they're, they're really cheap. And if you destroy it, you're, you're only out 8 bucks. Um, and uh, so then, um, uh, the new models, the Model 3s, have uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built into them, and so um, you don't need to worry about you know in the, in the with the Model 2, you'd actually have to have a little external dongle that you plug into one of your USB ports. Uh, so nowadays, you don't have to worry about that anymore. It comes with uh, uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. 
Um, the, and the, the heart of the Raspberry Pi, really what it's all about, is this uh, Broadcom chip. And the Broadcom chip is, I'm going to say essentially what you describe as a system on a chip. It's kind of, uh, that's basically it. You've got, you know, RAM, you've got, you know, a uh, four-core processor, uh, you know, it's 64-bit, even though I think most Raspberry Pi applications are 32-bit. Um, but that's it. I mean, at the real, that's really what the Pi is built around. And the, uh, ma the makers of Raspberry Pi have just done a phenomenal job being able to get all these components um, and manufacture this thing at an unbelievable price point. Uh, and that's just a real service to the, to the community. Um, next, we have a 40-pin extended GPIO. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input and Output. And these are the pins that you're going to use if you want to connect your Pi to other <laughs> hardware, um, like sensors, for example, or motors um, that you don't, you know, that don't have a USB connection to them. And I'll go over that in detail later. Uh, and that's basically it. Um, you know, most people when they get a Pi, you know, they get uh, nice housing for it. That's like five bucks or something, uh, just to kind of protect it um, and it, have it look nicer. And you can, you can, there's a screw mount so you can mount it on something like uh, the robot I built there. I mounted the, the Pi on it. Um, and, uh, and so that's about it. It's a, very, it's a very easy kind of technology to get into because the, the cost of entry is, is just so low. Um, so the, uh, you know, unlike your normal computer at home that's probably running Windows or if you have a Macintosh running uh, OS X, um, the Raspberry Pi runs Linux. And uh, previously, maybe a, a year ago, I gave a presentation on what Linux is. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Linux is uh, an operating system uh, that, for the most part, is totally free and open source. Uh, this, this laptop here is running Linux. Uh, this is my main laptop. I use it every single day. Um, you know, most of the computers in the world, <laughs> if you count things like servers and um, you know, data center computers, are actually run Linux. Because it is so, it is very mature. Um, you can get all the source code for it, um, and um, and it's free. Um, your Android phone, um, the kernel of your Android phone is uh, Linux. Uh, the kernel of uh, OS X itself is based on a branch of Linux, and so Linux is kind of all around us, even if you don't kind of you know realize it. And uh, you know, from an educational perspective. If there's one thing that you know you could learn that would really be useful to you, you know, throughout your career um, in technology, uh, it's Linux. And as I said, you can get into it absolutely free, um, which is uh, you know never ceases to me ama to amaze me how, how awesome that is. Um, so yeah, as I said, this thing has you know ports for USB monitor, um, you know, internet. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, built in. And then it has uh, GPI, GPIO pins that you can use to connect to other um, hardware. Um, and so, yeah, this is kind of sums up what I've been talking about. Um, why are people, why have, why have we all heard of Raspberry Pi to begin with? Um, you know, why has it kind of become this uh, little bit of a movement? Uh, because it's cheap and simple. If you have any sort of project that you can think of, uh, this kind of like an electronics project or a robotics project or anything like that, and you need a brain for it. Uh, Raspberry Pi is just a great place to start. Um, the Raspberry Pis are becoming increasingly powerful. You know, even though this thing, you know, is tiny and runs off of a, you know, a micro USB, um, you can actually do a surprising amount with them. Um, open source, you can get, you know, there's no nothing hidden from you, so you don't have to sign a non-disclosure agreement to see, you know, how how it works and to, to learn everything you could possibly want to know about the internals of this thing. Uh, and then it's, you know, in the education commu community, uh, people love Raspberry Pis because, um, you know, used correctly, they're just a wonderful educational tool. If you uh, want to build something like, you know, that robot that I have sitting on the table, you're, you're by necessity going to learn a little bit about operating systems, a little bit about hardware, and, um, and definitely a little bit about programming uh, all at the same time, even though you might not realize that, you know, you're actually learning a tremendous amount. And so that's, that's the other thing that's really wonderful about the Pies. So what can you do with these things? Um, in, in preparing for this presentation, I looked through a ton of kind of open source, you know, of uh, pu public um, projects that people, uh, that people do with uh, Raspberry Pies. 
And it is, it is amazing, you know, and it's really inspirational to see all the, the creativity out there um, and the clever things that people th dream up. Uh, you know, when you give somebody a really cheap computer uh, that's really small, it's just amazing what they will come up with. Uh, so I like this one, uh, for example, it's a fish pie, uh, an autonomous boat. And so you can stick the boat in um, uh, you know, any, any body of water and it can go find its own way, uh, much, like a, much like a drone. Um, this is a, um, uh, you call it a really cheap uh, radio, in a sense, that you could put kind of anywhere, you know, because they're so cheap, you can put them anywhere you want. And so this will let you, through the, you know, stream music through the internet. Um, it's got a simple but you know, pretty effective user interface. It's, it's a bunch of buttons there. And, um, and I'll publish these slides, too, so you can all see. But uh, um, all of these, they give you instructions on how to build them if you want to build them yourself. Um, and yeah, so if you are inspired by any of these projects and want to, want to do it, um, you know, go grab the parts and build it. And, um, uh, and you know, you'll learn, it, I'll learn, learn a lot, and it'll be a lot of fun, too. Um, so then this was a really neat, um, a neat, neat project. Uh, it's basically a rack for taking time-lapse photography, and we'll try and get it to display. And so what this thing does is it has a you know, nice uh, uh, DSLR camera mounted on um, essentially a, a sawhorse, and it very slowly moves um, uh, in one direction. Uh, tracked with the uh, the frequency of, of pictures that it's taking, and um, so the effect is this. Uh, unfortunately, better if it's a little bit darker in here. But uh, you know, you get these beautiful um, kind of photoscapes um, that uh, you know you really, if you didn't have a Raspberry Pi and had to come up with this on your own, uh, you know, you might have to go out and buy some pretty expensive equipment or try and figure it out manually or whatever. But the Raspberry Pi enables you to build that. Um, in a very simple and inexpensive way, and you've got instructions um, right here if you want them. So, a uh, solar-powered weather station. Uh, I, I like this because you know you can set it up in your in your yard. Uh, it powers itself, um, and uh, it's got you know uh, wind direction and uh, velocity, uh, rain rain measurement uh, equipment, and uh, the equipment the, the actual. Um, uh, uh, electronics needs for this, I think, are a little bit more involved than some of the other projects because I see here, it looks like he's using an Arduino um, and a couple other boards in addition to the Raspberry Pi. And so you probably need a little bit more uh, to actually build this one, um, but it would be a, a really neat project. And you could wire it up to uh, Weather Underground and you could actually contribute to uh, the body of meteorological data that is uh, continuously being made. Um, I like this one because you can take an old, you have a question? Well, the weather station, they can run it off of the solar panel? Let's check it out. They claim to. Uh, there it is. So let's see, since it's 20, oh wow, 20 different environmental values, completely solar powered. So yeah. Um, and so, the, so, well, gee, this one will teach you about databases, too. So you get to set, set up a MySQL database. Um, can be modified remotely. Uh, and so this can be modified by text message or, just, or Twitter. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Has an iPad-based control panel. And there, this is what I was saying. You can uh, connect it to, uh, so it'll post automatically to Weather Underground. Um, so you can set this up on Bainbridge and get the most localized weather forecast you can imagine. Not a forecast, but and all the instructions are right here. So this, this is kind of a simple, a simple use case um, that will turn a, uh, your old fashioned uh, wired printer into a wireless printer uh, using a Raspberry Pi. I like this one a lot. Um, this is what your garage opener ought to be. It's, somebody made this. Um, so uh, you have access control lists. Uh, you, you can monitor your, your garage you know, from the internet. Full video capture. Um, 
it will email you alerts if somebody comes, <laughs> comes to, if you're, you know, your, uh, your wife comes home, it'll, you'll get an email or something, uh, or it'll send you a text. Here you go again, standard Linux code, easily set up on a new Pi, quickly portable to other platforms. Yeah, like, uh, um, so here's, the, uh, here's how this person put the project together. You've got all your instructions right here if you want to build it. Um, again, another neat project that'll kind of teach you about several different technologies if you want to learn about those technologies like uh, video capture, uh, inter interfacing with the uh, SMS, the text messaging system, um, and actually hooking this up, hooking this Pi up physically to your garage door uh, opener, um, which I think some people might be intimidated by at first if they've never done something like that, but it's absolutely possible um, and uh, not, not really even that hard. Um, so then we have, oh, they went into Minecraft here? Yeah, all right, so Minecraft for uh, people who are probably older than the, the youngest generation is uh, uh, an extre <laughs> extremely popular game um, that uh, essentially, what's the best way of describing it? It creates almost like a virtual world, uh, but instead of the world being comp comprised visually of little pixels, the unit of um, volume in Minecraft looks like a, it's like block, and so it looks like a Lego, it looks like Legos. And uh, Microsoft, I think, just bought Minecraft for what, a couple billion dollars or something uh, because it's been so, so popular. But one thing you can do is set up a server, uh, you know, for, so that you and your friends or whoever can um, play Minecraft uh, together. And you don't need a big old desktop computer necessarily to uh, run your server. You actually only need a Raspberry Pi. And this is one of the, you know, when I was saying that Raspberry Pis can be surprisingly powerful, this is kind of one of the examples of that. Um, there you go. So you can play with your friends from across the world on your Raspberry Pi. And um, I'd actually be interested to know what the performance of this is, you know, compared to a, a traditional server, um, because I, I don't know, and I don't think they, they talk about that that much. But, you know, all the stuff you need is, is right here if you wanted to build this. And unlike some of the other projects, this is really a software project. And so there's not really any external hardware that you have to have to use. You know, you just plug this into your network, um, you get the software running, and then it, it, it should work. Um, this was a neat project. So this is a Raspberry Pi powered weather balloon. And so this, um, this involves not only a Raspberry Pi, it's called Pi in the Sky, uh, but also an additional a board that you can uh, presume buy, or you suppose build it if it's open source. Um, so it's a little bit more involved in terms of your, you know, your cost. Um, I'm not sure what, the, you know, how, how expensive this is, but uh, it interfaces with the Raspberry Pi. And uh, they I think they have some, uh, uh, they had some really cool pictures that I found when I was researching this of, um, let's see. Of uh, here's one. You know, I mean, look at that. I mean, th to imagine you could actually yourself go out and configure a balloon to take uh, photographs like that is just <laughs> really remarkable. Oh, that photograph came from yeah. Oh, hmm. Let's see if they have uh, UK. I'm not sure actually what the uh, FAA regulations are about weather balloons. This all was done in the UK. <laughs> so. You, if, you actually, if anyone actually wants to build this, I think you'd want to look into that a little bit more thoroughly, but, um, uh, but that's the idea. So um, this one was kind of cute. Um, you know, it can detect if, uh, you know, I think it's pretty simple. I think it just uh, fe feeds your pets, uh, um, you know, either when commanded to or on a, on a regular basis. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's it. And so I should talk a little bit about uh, two projects that I built with Raspberry Pi. Um, in both cases, well, in one case to satisfy a need I had, which is that I wanted to be able to turn on my computer at home um, and access it online when I wasn't at home, because I didn't want to leave it running all the time to save power. And so what I did, you know, the computer, it's a big desktop computer, uses a lot more power than one of these. And so what I did was I just connected the uh, pins on this to essentially the really the power button on the com on the computer itself the physical power button and uh, I leave this thing running all the time uh, which uses all you know very 
small amount of power. So I can log into this remotely, I you know issue the command, and then it'll, it's the equivalent of like literally like hitting the power button on my big computer, and the big computer will boot up, and then I can use it. Um, and that, that was just a, it's a neat, very simple application that you can run for the Raspberry Pi. It was one that satisfied a need I had. Um, and you know, the, my total cost of the project probably was about $40 or something. Uh, and then a little bit more involved is uh, this little robot I built, um, which uh, unfortunately is in a non-functional state right now. <laughs> um, so I'd love to be able to demo it. I haven't had time to set it up here. We'll uh, get it on camera. Uh, would you mind handing it to me? Okay. So this is, uh, um, I can explain it. You know, you'll have to use your imagination. So the, the chassis of the robot is built out of, uh, um, you know, parts you can order online. It's essentially just, you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, pieces of plastic with holes drilled in them where you can screw in standoffs like this. And uh, uh, the, the treads are a kit that you can get. Um, the treads are a little bit, a little bit wimpy, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, when I was uh, testing it, sometimes I'd be away from home and it would be driving around the apartment and then one of the treads would come off and it would be stranded and it was frustrating. But um, so the one thing I would definitely involve is, is putting a better set of treads on it. Uh, it's driven by two motors back here. Um, and uh, so you can, you know, make it, simply make it turn just by running one of the motors faster than the other. It can go forward, reverse, you know, different speeds. Uh, it's powered by, um, <laughs> this thing is you can buy on Amazon. They're a little bit pricey, unfortunately. I think they're a, I can't remember exactly how, how much, but it's basically just a big cell phone battery. And they're used to recharge your cell phone when you're um, uh, away from a power outlet. But what I needed was this thing happened to output, I want to say uh, 12 volts or so, um, and has quite a large capacity. So you know you need a little bit of a little bit more oomph to power actual motors rather than just electronics. And so this actually fit that bill. So this powers both the motors themselves and it powers the actual um, Raspberry Pi that, that controls everything. So um, the Raspberry Pi, um, I can log into on the internet when it's, when it's functional, uh, just over Wi-Fi. So everything works uh, via Wi-Fi. And um, then I built a uh, interface board here, which actually uh, controls the, you know, the, the, the Raspberry Pi issues controls to the motors um, via this board. Uh, because you know, one thing that you, you really don't want to do is hook up is one of the very few things you shouldn't do typically is hook up a motor directly to the Raspberry Pi. It's not really meant for that. The Raspberry Pi gives um, commands and instructions, but it doesn't really power things. And so you want something else that's beefier to actually power your motors and the Raspberry Pi just controls them. And the two, those two things come together on this board right here. Um, and then finally it has a, uh, this is a pan and tilt servo um, that I bought um, online is pretty cheap. I can't remember exactly how much. So I can, uh, you know, and then I, I would put a, it's not on there now, but I put a webcam on this. And so you can literally make this thing look around. Uh, so it's basically, a, you know, fully functioning, uh, not autonomous, but, uh, um, you know, remote controlled robot that, uh, you know, can roam around the house and whatnot and uh, look at whatever it wants to look at. And you can control it from anywhere that you have a uh, internet connection. And so you're welcome to take a look at it if you want later on and I'll explain you know in detail um, kind of how I put together if people are interested. Um, so those are the two projects that I built. So um, all right well let's let's get to the good stuff which is actually you know playing with the Raspberry Pi. So uh, there are really two parts of the, the puzzle. One is how do I talk to my Pi and then how do you get the Pi to communicate with the outside world. And so first we're going to talk about how you actually uh, communicate with the Raspberry Pi. So there are two ways. Um, the simple way uh, that you only probably end up using a handful of times is, well, you plug in a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse, you know, plug this thing in and you're good to go. Um, but uh, that um, is kind of annoying because <laughs> you don't want to, you know, occupy a monitor just for the sole purpose of being able to see what's on the Raspberry Pi. And so beyond uh, your initial setup, you're probably going to want to uh, remote into your Pi using a SSH. Um, SSH is a very, it stands for secure shell. It's a very commonly used, very secure um, method of remotely logging into a computer. 
And it's the way I'm going to say that almost everybody communicates with the Raspberry Pi after they've done that initial setup on it. Um, because without that, yeah, you have to use a monitor and a keyboard and it's, and it's annoying. Um, and the beauty of SSH is you can use it, you know, properly configure it, you can use it anywhere. Um, you know, you could access your Pi from anywhere that you have uh, internet connection. And so we'll talk about getting that set up uh, later. Um, <laughs> so one thing that people don't like about SSH if they're uh, new to uh, Linux or Raspberry Pis is uh, it's all text-based, you know, and um, the Raspberry Pi actually does ship with a uh, graphical user interface, which you'll see when we initially set it up. But again, beyond that initial setup, uh, I think that most people don't even use the graphical user interface. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, uses otherwise kind of precious computing resources, and um, the command line just ends up being a little bit more powerful. But I think some people are, are initially turned off because they say, oh, come on, you know, uh, haven't we gotten beyond this, you know, this sort of a computer that probably existed, uh, you know, 30 years ago? Um, you know, isn't there better technology now? And my answer to that is, don't fear the command line. Um, the command line is yeah, very fast once you get, know how to use it. It's very powerful. Uh, it's super robust. You don't need anything, you know, you need very little to actually get a command line access working um, in terms of bandwidth. I mean, you, you, need a, you can do it over an old 24 baud, 2400 baud modem, and it'll work just fine. Uh, and you can impress all your geeky friends. Um, so that's. Uh, um, that's how you talk to your Pi. And so after this presentation, if you want, we'll, uh, we'll hook up your Pi and get it configured. And, uh, um, and I'll show you how to do that directly. So next, how do you get your Pi to communicate with the rest of the world? Um, so if you want to use a, you know, a sensor or a, some kind of external hardware that uses Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or USB, it's pretty simple. It's basically just the same way as if you would plug it into your big, you know, desktop computer. But uh, a lot of devices uh, don't have those interfaces either because they're too simple and too small, um, where you don't want to incur all the overhead or power requirements you need to implement, you know, Bluetooth or USB. Even those nowadays, those requirements aren't that big. Uh, and so in that case, you use the GPIO, General Purpose Input Output Pins, which are these pins that run along the side of the uh, um, of the Pi. And this is where you start to get into having to know a little bit about hardware. So the general purpose input output pins, like their name implies, have multiple functions. Um, you can configure them in software to do kind of whatever you want, but you can make them turn something on. Um, you can make them uh, do what's called pulse wave modulation, which uh, is uh, how you control motors. So if you want to you know, make your motor run fast or slow, you can control it with those pins. Um, you can put an LED light to it, which, you know, it's always the first project that somebody does with, an, with a Raspberry Pi. You get a, a LED light to turn on and turn off, and it's very boring. And you kind of said, what, you know, what, what the, what the, what's the point of all this if I, all I can do is turn on a little light? And uh, don't worry, there's a lot more that you can do with it. And, uh, you know, after you successfully get your LED light blinking, then you probably are never going to do that again, and you can do much more interesting things. Uh, you can connect the button. So if you want to be able to, uh, you know, indicate something to your Pi, like, you know, hit a, like, think a garage door opener, then you can, instead of logging into it and doing that over the uh, internet, you just hit a button, and your Pi will, um, will sense that. Uh, switch other hardware on and off. This is what I used for my uh, remote computer turner honor. Um, you, uh, you know, I, I have the uh, <clears throat> two of the pins on the on the Pi wired up to the on-off button, essentially, of the computer, and uh, that's how I uh, can turn the computer on and off. Um, so this is where it starts to get a little more interesting. Um, Raspberry Pis are, are really uh, wonderful for controlling um, uh, motors. Uh, so a motor that you know uh, typically is going to drive something, you know, just you know forward or reverse at very little speed. A servo. Um, is like, uh, these are servos, if, uh, if you don't know. And a servo uh, will just, you know, tilt one way, or rotate one way or the other uh, a set amount. And then stepper motors are, um, um, can rotate 
as far as you want, but then they have the capability of holding that position. And so with motors, servos, and steppers, you can build robots. Now this is where things start to get more interesting than turning on a LED light because um, LED lights are pretty boring. So I pulled this up. Uh, I don't know if you've probably heard of this company called uh, Boston Dynamics. Uh, they were recently acquired by Google. Um, and uh, they are doing some of the most interesting things in robotics right now. Um, and uh, uh, this was just kind of a fun example of, of some of the, uh, the, co <laughs> the cool things that people are doing uh, you know, uh, you know, as we speak right now. Um, in I mean, this is, a, this is just really remarkable that they were able to get a bi bipedal robot um, that has that much stability. You know, able to go over uh, different sorts of terrain and avoid obstacles, and you know, this this actually this video came out just uh, fairly recently, and look at that, <laughs> has been getting a lot of attention because um, you know of what it what it shows. Unfortunately, um, they probably didn't use Raspberry Pis to build their robots, <laughs> but that being said, you probably could if you really wanted to. Um, and that's, that's what I did here. Uh, so Raspberry Pi is definitely powerful enough to you know, drive uh, a basic robot and probably even a fairly advanced robot. And if you need more power, well, I guess you could just get a second Pi uh, because they're so cheap. Um, but best of all, in terms of what you use these pins for, is to control other simple hardware devices. And so this is what, where you give your Pi eyes and ears. Um, and all sorts of other senses. Um, because the, uh, um, using those pins, you can talk to the devices like these using uh, two different types of essentially languages, uh, I squared C or SPI. And these, both of these interfaces are very widely used and uh, you can use them to communicate with any number of uh, hardware peripherals. So this is how you hook up, uh, you know, hook up a thermometer, a pressure sensor, ultrasonics, you know, any, anything that you want. Um, you're going to be able to find all of this, um, all of these sensors uh, that work either on I squared C or SPI. And as a consequence, you'll be able to hook them up to your, uh, to your Raspberry Pi. And um, just to give you kind of an example, um, if you've never seen a Spark Fun, um, you should check them out. They're a, it's, it's a really neat, this is how I got started in electronics. Let me shrink this down a bit. And um, they have a wonderful, uh, you know, I check their store all the time and I've probably spent way more money than I should on, uh, on their stuff because uh, um, they make it really easy to start building neat things uh, right, at, right off the bat. And so some of the things that you might want to hook up to your Raspberry Pi yeah, I would love to get this. This is more expensive, but this is a, a infrared, uh, an infrared detector. Um, IMU is an inertial measurement unit. Um, and so this thing, this little chip here actually, so it's nine degrees of freedom, right? So you have, you know, one, 